Hey guys, so in a previous video, I showed you guys how to do some just very basic multitasking on an Arduino. It was really nothing more than just a couple of timers and it would let you set a timer and check it and, you know, basically blink two lights at the same time uh, at different rates. And so that works for very simple programs. But today what I wanted to do is jump into a concept that is a very, very heavy topic. And it, it's basically an introduction to operating systems. Now, I know that sounds really, really scary. And trust me, it completely freaked me out when I started uh, working with operating systems. But I'm just going to go over some very basic things today. I'm going to skip over a lot of things that are, in my opinion, unnecessary to just get jump started. And what I wanted to talk to you guys about today are real-time operating systems. So real-time operating systems, or RTOSs, RTOSs, are super, super stripped-down operating systems that basically share the core concepts to how any modern uh, desktop computer works, Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever it is. And specifically, what I wanted to start these tutorials with is an OS called Chibi OS. And this is actually a port of Chibi OS, specifically geared towards being used on Arduino platforms. And it comes in both an ARM and AVR flavors, so you can use it on regular Arduino Unos or Teensies or, or some of the newer ARM-based uh, microcontrollers out there. And today I wanted to just show the very bare bones of basically how to make two threads run on your Arduino simultaneously. So, and, and that jumps into our first concept, which is a thread. A thread you can kind of think of, you've probably heard the term on your computer, how many threads are running on it. A thread is basically a program within a program. So... When you, have a, when you have, let's say, iTunes running, it may have a whole multitude of threads. There's one top-level program, which is the iTunes main program. But then underneath that, really running the whole show, there's probably a, there's a playback thread. There's a file I.O. thread, a thread that handles just reading files. A thread that handles library operations. And you see, you get the picture where, where you basically, you delegate tasks and you break the program down into smaller and smaller pieces so that it's less monolithic. So that there are fewer things that any one thread, any one sort of sub-program has to handle. So today I wanted to just show a very simple program. I know it's kind of long, but trust me, it's pretty simple. And all this uh, program does is spawn... Uh, a total of three threads, but really it's two threads, and I'll go over that. And those two threads, one of them is a blink thread, and it's just, it's all it's going to do. I don't have any hardware today, I'm on vacation, but all it would do on the Arduino, one thread is going to blink an LED just the exact same way that the blink program does uh, in your very first Hello World blink program. And the other thread is a fade thread that will fade an LED in and out just like that the example in the Arduino program fading. So we're going to create two threads and they'll basically operate independently of, e of each other. Uh, the only thing that they're really going to share is computer time, is processing time. So up at the top you can see I've included the ChibiOS ARM library. Again, if you have uh, an AVR, all you have to do is change this to AVR. And there's a link to these libraries in the description of this video, as well as there should be one on screen. And you just go download these and drop them into your libraries folder. And so we include this library up at the top. And there are a lot of different things that we're going to go through, and I'm going to skip over some stuff. But the basic idea is that each thread needs a chunk of memory to work with. So on your Arduino, when you write a regular program, your loop or you know, your Arduino program 
gets the whole run of all of the Arduino memory. You can, you know, fill it up with strings or whatever you want to do. You can just fill the whole memory. With uh, a real-time operating system or operating systems in general, you actually, programs get certain chunks of memory. Now, you can either have that be dynamic or static. Today, we're just going to deal with static, which is just going to basically carves out a slice of memory for a specific thread. And that memory is, it, it then within the thread operates just like on your Arduino where it has all the memory, you know, it can use wherever in that memory it wants, but it can't go outside of that memory. So we call that in Chibi OS, we call it a working area. So I have two thread working areas. I've created WA working area thread one, and I'm giving it a, I believe it's a hundred bytes. I believe that hundred is in bytes of memory to work with. And I'm creating a second one called working area WA thread two. And I'm also giving it a hundred bytes. And you can see right below it, I've defined a struct. And that struct is basically, it's sort of a, well, it's, you can see it's called thread data. So it, this struct just holds some initial parameters that we can pass to the threads so that they have something to start out with. Because what we could do is there is the potential, and I'll, you know, not in this program, but there is the potential that you could take one thread function, one thread, and spawn six different uses out of it. You know, you could have a blink thread and just from one function, have it spawn six threads that all do the exact same thing. They're all starting with the same function, but are past different parameters. So you could have six different blink threads with each LED blinking at a different speed, for example. So this is just a little bit of initialization data here. And I'm going to go over these. I'm going to skip these for right now, but I'll go, I'll come back to them. These are our thread functions. So this is what we'll actually call these are what will actually be running as our main programs, but I'm going to skip over them for now. And we're going to look at down here. I have void setup, and I also have void loop down here at the bottom. And you can see it's not used in, in Chibi OS when using an, a real time OS on Arduino. We just don't use loop. It's not part of our program anymore. We still have to have it because the, uh, Arduino compilation process requires that we have it, but we're just not using it. So in setup, you can see that I, the only thing I call is chbegin, and I call it and I have it set to the function. So this starts up the operating system and starts it with uh, the ch setup thread. So you remember how I said we were going to actually have three threads, but really we're only using two of them. CH setup is our initial thread. It's the spawn point. You can kind of think of it like main in a C program, although this is C, so. Uh, but it, it's kind of like our main. So we call that, and then because we don't actually want setup to ever end, we just put it into an infinite while loop. Because if setup ends, then this thread ends and it calls loop, and the whole thing gets screwed up, or at least it could get screwed up. So we just throw setup into an infinite while loop. And in our setup thread, our initial thread here, you can see I create two thread data sets. I set one and set two. Set one, I give the light pin, I set it to 13 and the blink time to 300. And set two, the light pin is on pin 20. These are honestly just basically random numbers I picked. I use teensies quite a lot and I know 13 is on a pin and 20 is a PWM pin. So you can change those around. Uh, and then fade time, which is also part of that thread data struct, is set to 10. And this will be basically the time that we wait between, you know, incrementing or decrementing our, our light, our LED brightness on the fader. So then I create, I, I call CH thread, THD create static. And these, this creates it spawns a static thread and a static thread is a thread that uses a static chunk of memory. So you remember how I said we just carve out a chunk of memory and that's what it uses. You can also have it be 
dynamic where it can expand and contract its memory, but we're not going to deal with that in this, in this example here. So we create it and we tell it to use the uh, working area for thread one, and it doesn't know the size of that thread uh, working area, so we also pass it the size of that. And in operating systems, we have priorities. So, for example, on your desktop computer, the kernel has a priority of one or maybe zero. It's, it's the highest priority. It will always preempt anything else. And so there's this whole concept of uh, preemption where if one thread needs to run and it's more important than another thread, it will actually jump in and take over even in the middle of another thread running. So that's where priorities come in. Higher, higher priority threads can preempt, can jump in and cut off basically lower priority threads. So we're giving both of these normal priority. And you see I'm telling it that the first one is for the blinker thread and that I'm passing it a void pointer to set one. So you always have to pass whatever your, your data, your initialization parameters here have to be passed as void pointers. So you can also, you don't need to have initialization parameters. You could also pass it no. But in this case, I actually do have some parameters, so I'm initializing it to set one and set two sent as void pointers. The third thread, or the second sort of real thread here, is being set to working area of thread two and giving it the size of thread two, also with normal priority. But this time it's being given the fade thread is what it should call, is where it should spawn. And we're setting it, we're giving it uh, set two as our initial parameters. So this is how we're spawning our threads. We're just basically giving it its chunk of memory that it's allowed to work from, a priority, and what thread we want to call, what function, and some initialization data. And that's it. And then down here, because if this thread goes away, then these threads go away. Just like I, how I said, if, if setup ends, it will knock out our setup thread here. Same idea here. So what I do here is instead of having just an infinite while loop, I actually have a while loop that uh, tells this thread to go to sleep for 100 milliseconds. Now, it, this could be 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, whatever you want, because really this is just the spawning thread. We're not really doing anything. We're not coming back to it, so it could really just sleep forever. Uh, but we do need to keep it running in order to not lose these threads. So now let's go back up to these guys here and you can see I have these two static thread functions and notice how they're not actually named the function that we, that we passed down, that we passed down here, blinker and fade thread. They're actually just, these are actually macros that, uh, let the operating system keep track of what functions are thread functions and what their names are. So you can see the first parameter of each of these macros is the name of the thread. So we have blinker thread and fade thread. And the second argument are our parameters, our initial arguments. And it's kind of like argv argc when you're calling a program, sort of kind of like that. Uh, these are the arguments passed as void pointers. So starting at the blinker thread, the easiest way that I find to deal with the arguments is just to, you know, recast it as whatever the initial uh, parameter is. So we, uh, we have a thread data is what we passed it as a void pointer. So in this case, I'm now creating a pointer to thread data and setting it equal to arg cast as a thread data pointer. Yeah, pointers are not very fun, but Unfortunately, when working with uh, real-time operating systems or operating systems in general, they're a, a necessity. So if, if this is confusing you a little bit, definitely go and look up pointers and 
don't worry if it's still confusing even after you've looked it up i'm still confused uh i've worked for quite a few years with programming and and c specifically and pointers still totally trip me up so don't worry if it's a little bit confusing but basically we're taking a chunk of data that is cast as void which basically means it's just a bunch of binary and the Arduino doesn't know how to interpret it. And we're telling it that it's a pointer to some thread data. So it's pointing to some data somewhere and that data is of a type thread data. So I know it's a little bit confusing, but just bear with me. That's really the most confusing part of this whole thing. And then just because I don't really want to keep using pointers, I actually just pull that data out and I create an int light pin and blink pin or blink time. And I set that equal to the data at this data, our thread data here, light pin and blink time. So now we we're actually not even going to be dealing with that pointer anyway, anymore. And then this is kind of just like this here is like our setup. We have pin mode, light pin, set as an output, and then our while loop here. Uh, our infinite while loop is like loop. It just keeps running whatever is in here over and over. So we have digital write, light pin high. And instead of delay, like we normally do on the Arduino, because we're using an, a real-time operating system, we don't want to stop things from happening. We actually just want to say, hey, I'm done doing what I need to do right now. Go do other things. And that's what this thread, CH thread sleep is. It's just saying... Tell this thread to go to sleep. I'll wake back up in however many milliseconds. But it, during that time, you can go and do other things. So we sleep for blink time, which I believe we set down here to 300. And then we wake back up and set it to low and go back to sleep. And we just continue doing this over and over forever. So that's our blink function. And then down here we have our fade thread, and this does the exact same thing. We have a name called fade thread, and that's what we passed down here. And this takes that, that pointer and reconverts it out to a thread data pointer. We have our light pin and our fade time, and those are equal to light pin and fade time of the argument that we passed. Again, pin mode, light pin output. And then in our loop, our infinite while loop, we have a for loop that goes from 0 to 255, incrementing 5 each time. And we write out our light pin and I, and we sleep for our fade time. And once we've finished fading all the way up, we fade all the way back down to zero. And these two threads operate completely separately of each other. They both have ints called light pin, and they don't clash. They're not global. They're all just self-contained within the functions. And it runs just like multiple programs run on your computer. It, it just... The operating system, ChibiOS, takes care of scheduling, timing, making sure threads don't step on each other. It's really, really cool. So I think that's where we're going to stop for this video. There are a lot more concepts of real-time operating systems that I'm definitely going to make videos on. There are mailboxes where you can send data to and from different threads, mutexes and semaphores, which... Honestly, I'm still having trouble understanding semaphores. I think I have mutexes down. But yeah, there's a lot more that can be done with this, not just having two completely separate things doing their own things, but you can actually have inter-thread communication, which is really cool. So, But we're not going to get into that today. We're done for today. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, Go click on one of these videos up on screen now. And if you like this, definitely come on, give it a, you know, subscribe to the channel. And you can get new videos like this every week. All right, well, that's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching.